this screencast, we'll be looking at what logarithms represent, how they're defined, how we can work out the numerical values that logarithms take, or at least estimate those values. And then we'll look at one of the main applications that logarithms are used for in practice. Now you're probably familiar with what we call a power statement, 2 to the power 3 equals 8. What we say here in general is that we have a base, in this case 2, which is raised to the power of 3. And what that produces is the number 8, because 2 times 2 times 2 produces 8. Logarithms are the inverse or the opposite statement to the one we see here. When we ask for the logarithm base 2 of 8, we're asking what power of the base that's given in the logarithm, in this case 2, produces the number 8. And the answer, as we've seen above, of course, is that 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. So the answer to our logarithm is the numerical value of 3. Let's try that out on a couple of examples, because that will tell us how logarithms are worked out in practice when you meet them in your work. Let's look at this one. Logarithm base 3 of 9. What does that equal? Well, what we're asking here is what power of the base, 3, produces 9? Have a think about that for a moment and pause the video if you need some time. Did you get the answer 2? That's because 3 multiplied by 3 produces 9. So logarithm base 3 of 9 is 2. Let's look at another one. Here we have logarithm base 2 of 16. What does that equal? Have a think about that for a moment. What you should have done in your head is think what power of 2 produces 16? In other words, how many times do I have to multiply 2 by itself to get 16? And if you think about that for a moment, you should find that the answer is 4. One more. Have a think about that one for a moment. In this case, you should have asked yourself, what power of 10 produces 100? That one shouldn't be too hard because we live in a base 10 number system. Our number system has 10 digits in it, going from 0 to 9. So powers of 10 are quite easy to work out. And it doesn't take much to realise that 10 times 10 is 100. Therefore, the answer to that logarithm must be 2. Now, those preceding examples were fairly straightforward. It's quite easy to work out what power of the base produces the number being subjected to the logarithm. What if we had a situation like this? Here we're after the log base 10 of the number 550. Now this one is going to be much harder to work out. Have a think about what the answer might be. See if you can come up with a number that's going to be roughly in the ballpark of that logarithm. One way to tackle this problem is to consider known logarithms that are close to 550. So for example, logarithm base 10 of 100 we saw previously was equal to 2. And 100 is a number that's a bit smaller than 550. On the other side of 550 we might recognise that logarithm base 10 of 1000 is 3. So it would seem logical that the answer to the logarithm in the middle should be somewhere between 2 and 3. It's possible that you might also pick up that 550 is exactly halfway between 100 and 1000. So we might suspect that the logarithm of that number is going to be round about halfway between 2 and 3. Now beyond those speculations, we can't say exactly what that logarithm is going to be. In order to find out the logarithm base 10 of 550, we're going to need one of these, a calculator. 
Calculators have two kind of logarithm buttons available usually. Your typical scientific calculator like this one here will probably have a log button which is the one you see here. Now to save space it just writes log and it's assumed that this is a logarithm with a base of 10. If you input the number 550 and then hit the equal sign it will tell you the number you see in the display here. So that confirms a couple of things. It confirms that the logarithm base 10 of 550 is between 2 and 3. It's also round about halfway between 2 and 3, but not exactly halfway. It's also what we call an infinite decimal, or if you know something about the different number systems, what's called an irrational number. It has a decimal expansion that goes on forever, as indicated by those three dots on the screen, without ever repeating itself. And that's why you need a calculator to work out most logarithms. But there's no reason why you can't look at a logarithm, like the one we've been working with here, and get a rough idea of the ballpark in which it should be. If you know something about the numerical value of a logarithm, then you're much closer to being able to use them effectively and understand what they're doing for you. To finish this screencast, let's look at what logarithms can do to help us in our mathematical and scientific work. Here's a typical problem that we might encounter in biology or in business and economics. A population is growing at a rate proportional to its size at any one time. So here we have a population that increases by a factor of 10 or grows tenfold every year. And what we often do is produce a visual representation of that. We start with some years going along a horizontal axis represented by the letter T there, year 1, 2, 3 and 4, and we'll use a vertical axis to plot the size of the population at various times. So let's say we start out with just one individual in the population, so we'll plot them there on the vertical axis at 1. We know that one year later there will be 10 individuals in that population. After two years the population will have grown tenfold again, which means there will be 100 individuals in that population. Now we can't plot that on the vertical axis we've used because it finishes at 10. So what I'll do is I'll collapse that 10 down much lower and expand the axis to include 100. So I can now plot the population after two years. Again, a year later the population will have increased by a factor of 10 again and there will be 1,000 members. So I'll drop that 100 down, make the axis even longer, going up to 1,000 and include those people there. And as you can see, it's a reasonably difficult thing to plot a graph of. The early population sizes at time 0, 1 and 2 are starting to cluster in a, in a sort of difficult to view clump at the bottom of the axis. Let's go one step further. After four years, our population has a whopping 10,000 members. If we join those dots with a smooth curve, indicating continuous growth of that population, we get a picture that looks like this. Classic exponential growth. Population starts out relatively small and then at some point it seems to explode into a much more rapidly growing population. And This is at the heart of a lot of biological systems as you can imagine and also has a lot to do with compound interest in applications in economics and business. Now as we saw earlier, those figures on the vertical axis are all powers of 10. A thousand is 10 raised to the power 3 and at the top end of our new scale 10 to the power 4 is 10,000. So what we can actually do is rather than using a what's called a linear scale for that vertical axis, we just plot the powers of 10 instead. So if we do that, we get this picture. So the 4 at the top of that vertical axis is representing 10,000, 
the 3 is representing a thousand, the 2 is representing a hundred, and so on. And what you see now is that that exponential growth has been changed to a straight line model. Now straight line models are much easier to deal with than exponential or any other type of curved model. So using this approach is going to make the representation of the information a lot easier. The gap between each number on that vertical scale represents a multiple of 10. So it's a non, what we call a non-linear scale. But each of those numbers still represents a power of 10. In fact, 4 is the same as the logarithm base 10 of 10,000. 3 is the logarithm base 10 of 1,000. We saw earlier log base 10 of 100 is 2. And similarly, log base 10 of 10 turns out to be 1. So we refer to this kind of picture as a log linear plot. That the vertical axis represents the logarithm of the population size and the horizontal axis is an ordinary linear scale like a ruler. That's a very simple example of population growth, an application of logarithms to the graphing of important information. If you'd like to find out more about our services, including our workshops and drop-in sessions and study survival guides, visit www.studysmarter.uwa.edu.au or find us on Facebook and Twitter.